Yes, sir. Yes. Well, hello, Milwaukee. What are you looking at me for, man? <laughs> what are you finish? No, no, I, I started. You started? I have started the show. Okay. And what's the name of our show? Focus 2020. Are you sure? I believe it is. Are you here? I'm, I'm somewhat here. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you hear what you introduce, I listen to who you are today. Amen. I'm Pastor Charles Emery. <laughs> and I'm Pastor Walter Owen. And we welcome you again. Uh, uh, our broadcast Focus 2020 right here at Joy 1340 AM and 98.7. Again, I'm Pastor Walter Owens, and we are going to have a blessed day today. Amen. I am looking forward to it because Mr. Fumbles is with me. Man, you go scratching your head. You know what? When is I just want to come in here one day. We were doing good. You was minding your own business, but I was. He started it. No, Sean started it. Oh, Sean, yeah, 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 yeah. Because he said Sean. he wanted to watch you do the James Brown. Yeah, with Sean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, so he, he he rubbing off. You rubbing off on him. That's what's happening. Oh, oh. Okay, <laughs> somebody got to do it. Let's get going today, man. <laughs> you know, uh, it's a blessing uh, to be back with you all, and we just want to welcome all our Facebook family and those who are tuning in with us again right here at Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM. You know, Pastor, I am very interested in something, very interested in something. You know, the way life is going on, Nowadays, uh, you know, uh, I'm reading about that with the pandemic. They got a vaccine. You get your vaccine yet? Not yet. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not planning on it either. Well, you better get it, get it. Cause I don't want you to be oh, I'm coughing and all that old kind of stuff around here. But, <laughs> but, but to, to make everything serious, I have a question for you and all our listeners, and that is, are we living the prodigal life? And you know, that is a very interesting question mm. because when you think of the story of the prodigal son yes sir yes sir. the father had two sons uh -huh. and the younger son came to his father and wanted to get his inheritance when the father wasn't even dead yet whoa whoa you know inheritance is not given to someone that when a person is still alive and after the person has passed away uh -huh. so you know a lot of people today we're living in the same mindset of carnality where the enemy is leading us down a pathway of rebellion against God when God already promises everything because Christ already left the inheritance for us mm -hmm. when he uh, died and buried and rose again. So it's, we're entitled to the things that God has for us, but a lot of people don't know that because we're still blinded from the truth. You know, uh, go with me, Pastor. You know, I saw something there. I want you to explain that to us, you know, to set this foundation. Earlier, I mean, you you were saying that you saw something you was teaching on it. it was over in Revelations three, yeah, uh, Revelations three. Why, why don't you help us with that? You know, to set this foundation because it's very important. And again, I want to know: Are we living this life of the prodigal? You know, Revelations three twenty, mm -hmm. Jesus makes it clear. You know, when he's talking to the seven churches, he says, "Behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking." Mm -hmm. And he said, if any man open the door, I will come unto him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. But then you go to 21, it says, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, and also and overcome, and also over, overcame, I also overcame, and sat down with my father in his throne. Uh -huh. And he said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And the revelation God gave me on this passage of Scripture is that, our hearts, you know, uh, he's waiting for access to come into our hearts. Okay. But okay. a lot of people are not given the access because of sin. Sin will keep you, even though one thing when I, I thought about when we was in our discussion is how um, in the beginning when God created man in, in the Garden of Eden, what did he say? Let us make man have our image and our likeness. Yes, God sir. breathed in him his spirit, which is his breath, mm -hmm. the wind, the suki of God. So when God breathed his breath into man, here in Revelation, Jesus is reminding us that He's knocking at the door when we already have the Spirit of God living inside of us, but because of sin, a lot of people don't know that. Okay, now, by reading this revelation that you were sharing with us, what does that have to do with being the son of a prodigal, your prodigal life? What does, how does that uh, equal out? 
Well, the thing with the prodigal son, you know, as I mentioned here, to him that overcame, when the prodigal son got his inheritance, he went off and lived a riotous life, you know, um, spent all his money, you know, on partying on women and different things, and went until he came to bankrupt, I'll say bankrupt, we mm -hmm. lost everything. So in the process, when Jesus says in Revelation, to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit in my throne. So the prodigal son, the only way to overcome was to come to himself, like it says in the scripture. You know, it says, you know, when he had spent all, in verse, uh, 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 St. Luke 15, verse uh, 14, it says, when, when he had spent all, spent all, there arose a famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And when he went and joined himself to the city of the country, and he sent him into the field to feed the swine. And he said, and he would have fain to fill his belly. In other words, he wanted to fill his belly with the same thing that people were eating. And but 17 says, and when he came to himself, mm. he said, How many hired servants my father have bread enough to and to spare? And I perish of hunger. So you have to come to realization that, hey, it was better at home, but because of my yes, foolish decision, yes, yes. I left home. Now I'm a prodigal. I'm a person that's in isolation from, from the connection, a relation with my father. You know, I like that, Pastor, because it, it takes me back when I heard earlier uh, a quote from uh, T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Yes. Jakes. He said, I never want to become drunk by success or drugged by failure. Yeah. So th that was a success that the young man had already had. Right. Same with us today. God has already uh, prepared everything for us. Yes, he has. You know, and we... In our own mindset, we want to follow and do our own thing. You know, I was listening to you, you, you mentioned about the inheritance. Yeah. But if only way you could get an inheritance or anything from a will, you have to be dead, don't you? Right, right. Because the, the deceased party, before they lie, that, you know, they leave this life, they, they um, get their will and testament in order. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. their possessions would be equally spread from the eldest to the youngest in the family. And if you have children, that's where you usually go. But if you don't have a children, it goes to the next kid. Okay. So, but in order for that to happen, they have to die. And the, the, prodigal, the prodigal son, you know, he wished his father, and it, it read into the message, he really wished his father was dead. If you ask for an inheritance for us, he ain't dead, what are you saying? You saying, I wish you were dead, because I want the inheritance now. Well, don't we do that? Don't we do that to Christ all the time? All the time. And, and, and I want y'all to catch this, what, what Pastor is sharing with us. When we're talking about the devil of inheritance that the young man want and the father gave him, we're talking about that disconnection. Yeah. Because you can't give to somebody if they in their grave or been cremated. That's not going to do them any good. But it, it takes me back to the same thing that Adam and Eve have done. Right. To Christ. Yeah. You know, it was that disconnection from him. You know, and like you said, that inheritance, but look what the particle father done. Look what we do to our kids. And look what we do to Christ ourselves. Yes. He provided everything for us, but it's about us and we want ours right now. Right now. You know, and that's yeah. sad because, you know, when you shared that with me, uh, and I know you said that the son wished that his father was yes. dead. Yes, because here in our, in our um, in the commentary that we had uh, read earlier, mm -hmm. it says, we will begin unfolding the meaning of this parable in verse 12, in which the younger son asks his father for a share of his estate, which would have been half of what the older brother would receive. In other words, a third for the younger and two thirds for the older. And then um, is a reference script in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 17. It said, though it was perfectly within the rights to ask, it, not, it, it was not loving, not a loving thing to do, as it implied that he wished the father dead. Instead of rebuking his son, the father patiently grant him his request. This is the picture of God letting the sinner go on his own way. And it says, we, we all possess this foolish ambition to be independent, which is at the root of a sinner persisting in his sin. Isn't that something? Persistent in your sin. And so the sinful state is also the state of constant discontent. It says, watch out, be on guard against all kinds of greed. And it says, a man's life does not consist of abundance of possessions. So this son learned the hard way that the covetousness 
leads to a life of dissatisfaction and disappointment. He also learned that the most valuable thing in life are the things you cannot buy or replace. Okay, well, how would you relate that to, to us? You know, and the way we are today, we do the same thing. We go to God, you know, for things that we know we really don't need at this time in our life. When God being so sovereign and merciful, sometimes he would give you what you don't really want. I mean, what you really don't need, but what you want, he let you have it. But also in the end, you know, coming back to the Father, because I made a mistake. Just like a person gets a position as a CEO of a company. You know you're not qualified for that company, you know, to be in that position, but you want it so bad. And you keep on praying and believing God. And then God says, okay, you know what? I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to let them see how much they can't do this job without me. Because I have to be the first priority in their life. But I'm not the first priority in your life. Then I'm going to let you go down your own pathway. And then you're going to come right back to me in repentance saying, God, I made a mistake. That's good, Pastor. I like what you just said there because a lot of times God uh, will set the foundation for us. Yeah. And he will give us. And that's one thing I like, like uh, in the scripture, God said, I will provide all your need. Yeah. He didn't say nothing about your wants. No. And that's why we see where the disconnection of spiritual death came in with the son and his father. And what we do to Christ is that whatever we ask God, he will give us what we need. He knows what you need. Yes, he does. But we are so caught up into our own understanding and want to live our own life. Well, we move him aside. We do. And it's so important, like it says, watch out, be on guard against all kinds of greed. Why? Because the enemy, he knows your desires. He knows what, what's going to lure you and entrap you into his plan mm. instead of God's plan. Okay, okay. You know, as I was teaching, I started teaching it yesterday um, concerning the battlefield of the mind. Our, battle, our mind is a battlefield. And if you don't know how to arm yourself against the enemy when he comes into your battlefield, he's going to destroy you. And he's going to strip you of all your power and your authority and bring you to a captivity. When we should be doing the opposite, bringing his thoughts into captivity to obedience of Christ. But because we're not studying the word of God, we don't know the word of God, you're not meditating on the word of God, you're not trying to live by the word of God, you're living by the dictates and influences of your flesh, which your flesh leads you down a pathway of destruction. So then, in other words, that's why we're lost. That's why we're lost, the yeah. prodigals. You know, and, oh man, this is this is so good because over here in Luke, Luke 15, as you was reading, I saw something in a verse uh, 28, uh, Luke 15 and 28, it says, but he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. Now, what I'm reading here, Pastor, at, at the top, you were saying that there was two brothers, mm -hmm. the young and the oldest. Right. And the oldest one was to gain the first inheritance. It's just like uh, uh, in a royal family. You have the king, firstborn, he'll end up becoming the new king. If his wife will become the princess. Right. And this is what I'm seeing right here is that God will provide you, your family members, on what he feels you deserve. Absolutely. According to his will. Uh, come on now. According come to on his now. will. Because, you know, a lot of times <clears throat> we try to follow our own will and desires, and that's out of the will of God. Because the Bible tells us, submit yourself unto the Lord. You know, if you're not submitting to the Lord, who are you submitting to? Come on now. Come We're submitting on, to the enemy. Yes, sir. To his voice, his influences, his guidance, his direction, his teaching. Because the enemy teaches you too. You know, God teaches us through his word. The enemy teaches us through the world. So the more you feed your spirit with whatever positive or negative thing that's come from either from God or from the enemy, the enemy's negative, God is positive. So whatever I feed myself the most is what's going to have the greatest influence in my life. You know, and that's when the enemy comes in and says, you know what? I'm uh, this like the oldest son. He was at home. It says it here. He, he, was, he, he was there and, and if, you know, when he came to his father, you know, because his, his brother had messed up. You know, the father said, everything I have, it's already yours. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so in other words, this is like the Pharisees, the self-righteous, that, you know, I'm with you. Everything that I want, you don't want to do for me, but you want to do it for him who wasted everything. But the father said, you know what? It's okay because my son was dead and now he's alive. But he said, but you are here in the house. Say, everything I have 
you have access to this. You know, and, and that's the thing. We don't we forget what we already have a lot of times, but we want to cut somebody else what they have and what they did and what they didn't do is right before God. But all the time, God says, you know what? Everything I have, I already gave it to you. You know, Pastor, that is so good. That is so good. And I want our listeners to catch that. It's because God will provide you, like you said, what he wants you to have. His grace, his mercy is already poured upon you. But we get so jealous yeah, yeah. of what someone else, and then when we do that, the enemy will move in and distract us from what we already have. Yes, he will. You know, what did the father say? You know, your brother has left. Right. Your son, your daughter, your sister, yeah. they have left, but you're still here with me mm -hmm. in the kingdom, and everything is already here is yours. But you're so busy being jealous, yeah, being, being worried jealous. about somebody else's business that you forget what you already have. And that's what I'm saying to our listeners. Focus on what God has given you yeah. and be and thank him. Thank him for the blessing that he has given you. Yeah. I cannot yeah. be in the same household with you, Pastor, and mm. I run off, and then you get mad when I come back. And you say, well, I was already there. Why are you giving him this? And people do that on the job. Why did they get that promotion? Well, I've been here longer than they have. Right. <laughs> but it's about the timing. Yeah. It's about the timing. You know, every, everything about our Lord, he does it in timing. And if you just focus on what you have, mm -hmm. you will get That's that blessing. It. And see, the thing is, I found, and I'm watching, Pastor, a lot of people get so caught up in what someone else has had. I'm sorry, what someone else have. Right, someone else have. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, is is that, well, uh, he's got that nice house. He's got that nice family. What the thing is, is called sacrifice. What are you willing to yes. sacrifice yes. for Christ? Yes, that's you it. Know, you know, I hear a lot of people say, man, I want to be a pastor like you. Okay, you yeah. do? Are you willing to make that sacrifice? Are you willing... Uh, to be persecuted? Are you willing to go through all those things? Right, right. And, and, and when I hear people complaining like the brother was, were you willing to do what your brother does? Right. You know, and, and that's where Christ, where he, he comes to us with an open eye. Yes, he does. You know, uh, yes, does. and I know uh, you all have heard this many times. I found Jesus. I found Jesus. How you going to find something that ain't never been lost? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You know, how you going to find Jesus? Right. He, he ain't lost. Right. We do just like what we have read about the prodigal son. We leave. We leave him. Then once we get out there and realize, oh, this ain't the way I thought it was. And a lot of reasons we act and behave the way we do is because of religion. Because of what we've been taught growing up. The old cliches and mm -hmm. those old comments and things that people have taught us. So they say, I found Jesus, right? And, and that's enough. No, he found you when you were dead in your trespasses and sin, and wherein he has quickened you and made mm -hmm. you alive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's when we have to get an understanding that religion is not what God's looking for. He's looking for relationship. So where's your relationship? Oh, time out, time out, time out. That's a good one. You, 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 you threw, let's go to a commercial break. You said what now about the religion? He doesn't want your religion. He wants what? Your relationship. He doesn't want your religion. Your religion will keep you messed up and confused and keep you out of the will of God, but your relationship keep you connected and walking in divine order. Makes sense, right? Because that's what God is looking for. He's drawing. He said, I have loved thee with everlasting love, right? Yes. By my loving kindness, I have drawn thee. Uh -huh. God didn't say, I drew you by religion. He said, I drew you by everlasting love. So religion says, you know what? I can do my works. I can do, do things to get approved of God's credibility upon my life. I can make myself look pompous and pious and look real good before men. What did Jesus say? They have their reward already. Why? Because they love standing in street corners and under synagogues and, and for that much speaking, so they make themselves look like grand, grand, grand the way they're supposed to be according to their standpoint. When, and that, like we read in the scripture earlier, Matthew, you know, Jesus was talking about how the Pharisees, you know, they, they, they're like blind guides. Come on, you know, come on. He says, he says you, 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 you clean the cup on the, on the outside, but you don't clean the inside, you know? 
So you're filthy. He said, you, you're filthy. But then he talks about, you're like a sepulcher, open sepulcher. You're like a grave full of dead men's bones. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're stuck in your religion. Amen, amen. And I like that, that again, I have to go back with Pastor T.D., uh, Bishop T.D. said, I never want to become drunk by my success. Yes. You know, and, and what I took from when he said that is that we get so caught up on our own, the success, the things of this world. I heard you mention about uh, people wanting to be just like what happened to the prodigal son. He wanted to be a part of the world. Yeah, you know, he had world. this money. I, I, I'm going to go out and be with the women. I want to have the cars or the clothes. Same I just glory. Yeah, uh, uh, it's all about me. Yeah, but then he what ends up just call him hypocrite. A hypocrite, <laughs> but he ended up being drugged by his failures. Yeah, yeah. And when we're talking about drug, we're not talking about narcotics. How he was drugged in the mud. How yeah. the enemy came, broke him down. Broke him down. That's it. You left everything that your father has given you, has blessed you with, and you even wish that your father was dead to gain an inheritance that you didn't have to work right. or nothing for. But the love of his father said, hey, go ahead and take it. Right. Go ahead and do what you're going to do because you're coming back. And that shows the heart of God towards hey, people man. today. That's he still good. loves us unconditionally. You know, again, are we willing to, and are we living the prodigal life? You know, because if we realize how much our Lord and Savior love us, our Lord yes. and Savior, yes. that word Savior, he already yes. know what we're going to go through before we even do it. Yes, he does. And one thing that I love about him and what even in the story here, they say when he came back to his right for sins, sins, yes. came to sins himself. Yep. and then what happened? What happened? The father ran to him. You know, and that's another point we have to pick up on, uh, again because that is really good how you see the embracing of the father's love towards a rebellious child. Mm. You know, how the father was willing to, you know, look for the son. He didn't, you know, when the son left, and I'm sure that broke his heart. Like, my son just left me. You know, you know, he won his inheritance, but he's gone. But, I'm still looking for him to come back, because I know he's coming back. How much God, how many times God done that towards us? You know, we go astray, go live our own lives, try to cut God off in our lives, but we find ourselves in a roadblock and we gotta come back to God. You know what? When you say we're going to come back to yes. God, let's let's finish this next week, Pastor. Yes, this yes. is really good because this is just a beginning. Yes, it is. This is just a beginning because what we found in here, there is life and it's more abundant. Before we get out of here, Pastor, as I always do, I want you to give us a encouraging word. And I will close out with the scripture. Let's, let's do okay. this right quick. All right. So I just want to encourage all our listeners today to allow your heart to be examined by the Holy Spirit within yourself to see where you are living. Are you a prodigal? Are you are you walking in righteousness and truth? And allow the Spirit of God to bring you to an understanding of who you are and how the Father loves you unconditionally and keeps looking for you to return when you go astray. Yes, Father, and my prayers is that we all come to our right for senses in our mind, our right sense. Father, when we leave you, guide us back to you. We need you more than ever. Father, thank you for your open arms and guiding us and directing us. In your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.